I find the like the question of for how long do I do this and how big do I get? Like those for me, those are like the hardest questions mm-hmm. to answer and because the, the answer is always changing. Um the adage was if if you're not if work doesn't hurt, then you're not working hard enough. Right. And and <laughs> you're dude, not doing it, it right. It yeah. hurt, man. It, it was hurting. And and things start to give. Your health gives your you know, I, I don't believe work has to hurt. So it's a kind of polar opposite. And at that moment I just said, you know, dad, we're down a slippery slope and I don't, you know, I don't want to lose this business, but if mm. we don't drastically change or at least, you know, really take a different approach, we're going to lose all our people. We're going to lose our business. Culture is, it's a weird thing. It's like, you have to, it's, I can't define it. You get asked all the time. Like, what does culture mean? I'm like, I don't fucking know. It's, I don't know. I think for me, it's, it's intuitive. Um, if you, if you had to describe it, I would, I would say it's the DNA or soul of the organization. It's, it's how the company shows up. Mm-hmm. It's a feeling. That's the way I would describe it. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode six of the Community Made Podcast. Say sis, sis in French. Wouldn't that be in Spanish? Uh, uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis. Seis. You know how I actually learned how to cope with what was going on in my head? Was uh, for those in their 30s would know this song. It's a song from Offspring where they, they sing to six. Um, so welcome to episode seis. Um, I'm your host, Jason Gaynard. In our last episode, I shared one of my most cherished interviews, uh, an interview recorded only a few weeks before Jordan passed away from cancer, leaving his wife and his two kids behind. Jordan had just an incredible outlook on life in that episode. I mean, we just had a really honest conversation about business and relationships, facing your own mortality and and how being forced, you know, to step away from the business and kind of put his ego aside really changed his life and changed the way he ran the business. And on today's show, I'm interviewing two really great friends of mine. I may mention in the intro for this season, this format of, of podcasts where I sit down with two good friends of mine and just... We chat, and we chat about a little bit of everything. Matthew Bertulli and Tony Guerreri, both guys I've known and respected for years, and both are actually members of the MMT alumni family. Matthew Bertulli is the CEO and co-founder of DMAC Media, a digital marketing agency here in Toronto, specializing in e-commerce solutions, which he founded with his wife over eight years ago. And Tony Guerreri is the CEO of Roma Molding, a company that specializes in design and manufacturing of custom frames for fine art. I smile while I read this because, so Tony, and you'll hear about this in the podcast episode, Tony took over a family business. It's it's about a 30-year-old family business. Took it over a handful of years ago and um, really shook things up as far as making a big shift and double downing on, um, double downing if that's a word, (laughs) double downing on culture. I smile because he is the exclusive, I guess, frame provider for an artist called Peter Lick. And Peter Lick is a photographer and has, I guess, galleries in the most expensive cities <laughs> in the world. So a couple in Las Vegas. What was it? I think there's one in La Jolla. I've seen a bunch. But i um, huge fan of his work. And Tony actually framed one of his pieces of art that sold for $6.5 million. I believe the piece was called uh, The Ghost. And I smiled because last week I was – or last weekend, I mean, really two days ago, I was in Vegas with my wife for our anniversary. <laughs> I ended up buying two pieces of art on a whim. And it's it's funny because I know I'm sidetracking a little bit, but there's, there's value in this. When I worked for Ikea, one of their philosophies was that as soon as you walk into a store, they have all these like great sale items and deals because their philosophy was that if you opened your wallet at the beginning of the, the process, the sales process, I guess you could say, then that wallet would stay open and you'd buy many more things. And while in Vegas, I stumbled across this piece, actually it was called Hooray, We're All Broken. And it's a piece done by Jim Carrey. And if you've seen the little mini documentary he put out on Vimeo, uh, I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, I, I the, the painting to me means so much. I was walking in a mall with my wife and I stumbled across it and I went in and I ended up buying it, which again, you know, <laughs> I never thought I'd be a, a quote unquote art 
collector, but it, that piece really, really spoke to me. And then literally once we bought that piece, we walked back to our hotel, which is the Venetian, and the Venetian has a Peter Lick gallery there, and we've been to the Peter Lick gallery a bunch of times and ended up buying another piece there. Um, and then after that, I told my wife, we got to lock herself up in, <laughs> back in the hotel room because we're going to keep spending money if we stay out. So um, all that to say, Tony does the framing for Peter Lick, so he'll be framing our new piece of art, which we have nowhere to <laughs> nowhere to put as of right now. But uh, So we had a chance to sit down and just have a really great conversation about balancing the demands of parenting young children while building your company. Both of these guys have daughters under the age of one. We talked about working with family, both work with family, the importance of relationships, questioning whether or not to scale, and developing a company culture that reflects your core values. And I have to tell you, when it comes to culture and core values, both of these guys are, <laughs> there's a lot of people out there in the you know expert space and the you know, write books or whatever the case may be that unfortunately knowing a lot of these people firsthand, they preach certain things and then behind the scenes, they're, <laughs> they don't, you know, subscribe to their own teachings. Uh, I mean, one book I know, actually, I don't want to put them under the bus, but I promise you there's a lot of books uh, and a lot of authors and a lot of, again, people who scream from the rooftops, all these best practices and don't do it themselves. In this case, both Matt and Tony, I mean, Tony specifically, but maybe even Matt, he has 10 of his original 12 employees, which I think says a lot because they're close to 100 employees now. You know, Tony took a big shift when it came to culture, went to Zappos um, and was fundamentally changed by that experience. And, you know, I forgot uh, how many people he had to to let go when he came back, uh, when he made the decision to really double down on, on culture. But I mean, this guy lives it. He breathes culture. So there's a lot of great culture takeaways in this episode as well. So I won't ruin it for you. So enjoy episode six with Tony Guerreri and Matthew Bertulli. The, the car seat thing, you're, you're stuck with it until you're like, she's much older. Yeah, no, I thought, I thought, yeah, like four, five. No, man. No, no. And then, then they have to go from a car seat to a booster Boosters. seat. And then. Is Evan a booster? What? Is Evan a booster? Uh, no, she's still in a car seat wow. until a certain weight or height. Both. And then. It's like, a, it's one or the other. And then, uh, then after she moves to a booster seat, and you can't put them in the front of, front seat till they're like 21 or something. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, this yeah, is, the, it, this I, is like, I love it. This is, you want to talk about like entrepreneur conversation? This is typically what it devolves to. It's like, okay, we could talk about business. It's like, no, no, no. Let me, let's discuss all the other shit in our lives that we're trying to figure out <laughs> and doing a really bad job at it because like the business takes up so much mind share. It's true. Right. Like I just, half the time my wife asks me my opinion on it. Like, what do you think? I'm like, I, nothing actually. Like there's, if you could envision a flat line, I know. <laughs> this is what's happening in my brain right now. Like, what's your opinion on this for our child? Uh, yeah. <laughs> how does that go over? Like, over like, good? I asked you, I'm like, no, no. It's like, I'm like, do you, do you want me to read on it? I can go read on it. Yeah. Like I'll post an ask to mastermind talks. I, <laughs> like who does this with their children? Yeah. And I'll get some input, but you, yeah, I, I feel very, uh, like uninformed. Like most of the time with parenthood, like, <laughs> like, the, I like how you say that. it's totally like, it's, yeah. uh, but I like it because then I feel like it's like the, I find like this, it's like, no, no, no. It's not like you put a cape on and go to work. Right. But like the, the work side of, of life, um, everything is, it's like, I feel like it's very information heavy, right? Like it's so easy to go get information on anything. Mm. And then with, with being a, a father or a parent, um, there's almost too much out there on like how to do this more so than business. Like there's so much, cause think of like how big that addressable market is. Sure, right? sure. Um, so I don't read anything. But then I love it because now it's like, this is like the only thing in my life where everything is purely instinctual. Yeah. Right? Like I think the first book I bought on parenting was that one that Stu McLaren posted on Facebook like two weeks ago. So the funny thing is, uh, have you started, have you read that book? No, yet? it's sitting on my counter. Oh, <clears throat> so I started reading that book and the first chapter is about how <laughs> the biggest mistake we make as parents is thinking that's instinctual and that. Uh, oh, that uh, totally. <laughs> but it's so fun. Yeah, no. <laughs> It's, uh, no, we definitely, especially like first time kids, it, it's, and it's funny. You see this a lot with parents where they have several kids and after they have the first and you know, they're all worried and that kind of stuff. The second they're like, uh, whatever, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. It's, it's, uh, it kind of feels like, um, when I look through the Facebook feed, a lot of people mastermind talks are having kids. 
Yeah, There's, I mean that's that's our our demographic. I mean, usually mid thirties. Right, like Mimi Icon just had a kid. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. Nicholas just had a kid. I mean, you're not too far off. I'm not too far off. No. Yeah. There's a lot of new babies. Yeah. Yeah. There's like a wave that hit. Yeah. Right? That's it was what I'm like everybody had kind of older kids, and then all of a sudden it was like the mastermind talks group is just babies. Yeah. <laughs> it was like what happened? I was trying to. <laughs> I was trying so hard to keep How up. How good to, is this event? <laughs> it's it's so hard to keep up to date with like. Uh, you know when people are are due by, and if there's if it's a boy or a girl, you forget and names and and that kind of stuff. But yeah, I mean our demographic is like early mid thirties, and that's usually when they start having, you know, kids. Is there so. is there actually like a um, I don't know what the tome of knowledge is out there, but like around you know entrepreneur as parent, like what do you mean? And like that kind of balance between the two. Because like I my wife always jokes that it's like I've got one baby at home and I've got ninety of them here. Yeah. Right. She's like, you've got a lot of kids <laughs> and it's, and I, it's just, it, it's a joke between us. Cause it's, you feel responsible Yeah, for like, for sure. you got a lot of families. Like you open it up. Like there's a lot of families. You have a lot of families that depend on you. Right. So like, I wonder if there's a, I just haven't looked, but like there has to be like books on this where here's the, here's the parallels. Here's the differences. <laughs> This is the engineer in me. I'm like, can somebody just fucking yeah, deconstruct just to, like, it so that I can see thing? its components yeah. and put them in an order that makes sense to me? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know how you guys do it. With, I, I had a staff of 20 or, or something like that, and it drove me nuts meeting payroll all the time and knowing that like we never miss payroll, thankfully. But I'm like, if we miss payroll, that's like I couldn't know, even imagine food on people's yeah. table and. You know, you have we all have friends who who get close to missing pay. Well, we or we all end up in situations mm-hmm. where you're like, you know, stuff hits the fan and you're you're trying to make it work. And I'm like, I that pressure, I just couldn't deal with it. There's that. There's like the, I mean, you're a big culture guy, Tony. So like, there's the, like you just always want to do right by them. Mm-hmm. Um, but which is so, it's like being a parent. And it's like sometimes I'm like, yeah, just what what I know is right. I'm like this person does not want to hear this. Mm-hmm. Right or like the company does not want to hear this. This is not a, a piece of information that's going to like brighten somebody's day, but it needs to be shared because it is going to help them. Like it's going to help everybody do a better job, be more effective, whatever. Um, but it's weird. It's like you've got the the. I feel like there's a weight of responsibility. I don't know about you, but like for me, there's this weight of there's a lot of people that depend on me not screwing the direction up. Yeah, because that's really what you do at like when you're. I think with any amount of scale, at some point you get into that visionary role, right? Where you're like, I'm just here, I'm here to steer the ship. I'm here to be the leader. Um, but tactically, I'm not doing a whole lot. Right? Yeah, I, you know, like, I could totally, I mean, it, it's a lot, right? 150 families, yeah. um, how many kids? I think we did the number of how many, you know, extended family. I mean, it, it's, oh, it's, a, it's a big community, right? Yeah. And, and I take it very seriously, especially because I'm a second generation you know, uh, entrepreneur, I've, I've been CEO for five and a half years coming on my sixth year. And, and like you said, I take it very serious, not only because of, I'm indebted to the, to the families who wake up every day and, mm. and, and do their best work and, you know, on, on the team, but also to my family who entrusted, right. You know, you know a business and, uh, Oh yeah. Cause you've like, if you, Oh yeah. How much your family works in the business? Are we still on air? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> no. How much your family on no. payroll? We have, uh, we, we have co- quite a bit, quite a bit, but you know, it, it muddies the water a bit for sure. And I couldn't even, yeah, like it, it's tough. I mean, you work with your brother. Yeah. Right? Only for like for coming up on three years. Okay. But you, but I started with the business with my wife. Wow. Okay. So like that was, so don't with, ever do that by the way. That's just, it's a bad idea. <laughs> Jason, you wanna, don't look at me. Do you want to chime I'm hard, in there? I'm already, I'm, I'm already too far down that There's creek. A way knee deep in that. <laughs> it, it wor- I th- sorry, it's like I'm broad stroking. Uh, it worked for us for a time yeah. until it was like this is just long term. This wouldn't work. Like my wife's like, this wasn't my baby in the first place. This was yours. Um, I was here to help. She's like, I need to go do my own thing. So that was where we got to. But like, was it like a mutual conference? Like you guys were both on the same yeah, page. We call it. We retired her. Got that's it. like that's well, the, that's nice because some people retired, don't, Jen. don't yeah. go through that phase. No, she and she easily. she came to me with the idea. She's like, look, Aww. I think this is it was getting um, it's a good woman. She, it was getting too big, like she was getting uncomfortable with the size of the whole thing, hmm. uh, like too many people. She didn't like the relationships weren't as tight. Like she's very family oriented, and um, like it's funny, even like the the girls that she hired on the design team. Because my wife was the creative director here, mm-hmm. like they're still here, and they're, it's a very tight team. Like mm-hmm. they're freaking awesome. But, like. 
holiday party rolls around, like the first question they ask me is like, hey, where's Janet Olive? I'm like, well, fuck, nice to see you too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think like, yeah, she, she approached it. Uh, and I, like it wasn't even, it was a pretty quick conversation. I'm like, yeah, all right. Like we are, I think we started out saying, this is probably not a forever thing, mm. right? Like I just need help. So for you, at what point did you, did she transition out? Uh, just coincidentally, um, about like four or five months before, uh, she got pregnant. So that was so not that long ago. No. So uh, how big was the company at that time? Well, two years ago, right? 50, 40, no, 40, 40 people. Wow. So you've, oh, so you, you've, you've, doubled. oh, more than double. Yeah. We've grown. Again, engineer, super calculated. It's like between 47 and 58% a year yeah. <laughs> is the, the band that we kind of operate in. Um, we're, I'm starting to go a little slower, like now that we're bigger. Um, just to, again, just be like as predictable and calculated about it as possible. Because um, like no, I, I don't have any like big dreams. Like I don't, like 150 people kind of scares me a little bit. Um, so... I think it's just always a, a question of like, all right, like what's next? What's challenging? Is this still fun? It's a big question. So for Jen, it was like, you know, 40, 50 people. I told her, I'm like, it's probably going to keep going for a little while. Mm -hmm. um, which means there's points where you, you stop. You actually like, you know, people, you know, their families, but you don't really know them. Like not the way that I knew, or I know like the first 10 people I hired. Yeah, for sure. Like I know them like so well. Yeah. Um, like, like intimate things. Like, um, you still have some of those employees. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. I love that. Uh, first, I think of the first 12, I still have 10. Wow. No way. Yeah. It's a big deal. How yep. long, uh, uh, how many deal. years is that? Eight years? Uh, coming up just, we're coming up on eight years. So like my partner, Jen and I, we were, there was four of us for the first, seven mm -hmm. uh and then i've got a handful that are at six years wow. a whole bunch more that are at five and they've all been hitting these anniversaries this year i'm like what do you do for people and they like like somebody's fifth anniversary came and went and we didn't even know like because they're really <laughs> quiet like again introverted person right then um we finally hired hr a, comes into play yeah so we finally <laughs> hired an hr person uh and she was like yo is so-and-so sixth anniversary two months ago like get the fuck out of here like he didn't say anything. She's like, what's sort of your job, asshole? <laughs> what do you, what, you know, I what do you do for, like, because you have a young team. What's the average, like? Oh, like we're like 25, 26 years old. Yeah, and I'm like, I, I think of, like, my father. My father's been in construction for 52 years or something like that. Mm. And at his wow. 40th year, they gave him this cheap pin. And he was so proud of this cheap pin. And then on his 50th year, they gave him this cheap watch. Right. Some like Alibaba watch with right. like <laughs> the, 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 the union logo on it and stuff like that. And he loves, he doesn't wear the watch, but he was so proud of this watch. And if I've been like with, if I'm a millennial and I've been with you for like five years, 10 years, and you give me like anything remotely like that, I'm, I pretty much would quit. We don't give any, we don't give them. No, it's more like we throw like we'll, a party or something yeah, like that. Yeah, we'll that's like we'll, like, we'll go out, we do a lot of socials and stuff. Like we do a monthly social, and we'll like we'll recognize people at those. Mm. Um, it's like axe throwing and like go shoot each other with bow and arrows and shit. Yeah, um, all hands maybe. Yeah, <laughs> no, all, hands, all hands for sure. Yeah. yeah, like we'll recognize like new hires, um, any kind of milestones at all hands. We do monthlies. Um, they're about thirty forty five minutes every month, um, and it's like company information. You know, new people, departing people. Uh, it's like, I'll even, I'll celebrate people leaving like for sure. Particularly it's like, you're, I love the, that get out of hand. Hey, uh, it gone. can, yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> no, but it's not that Did you it's fire like, somebody you'll celebrate or is it new. Oh. That's a, no, <laughs> that, I think LinkedIn <laughs> got shit saying. for that. Didn't they? Like LinkedIn called it like graduating. Really? Yes. Yeah, so they would graduate oh, yeah, people. Yeah, there yeah. was like a whole fucking thing yeah. that was in the news recently really? about that. Yeah. Um, no, we don't do that. No, it's more like when somebody's with us for like two, three years, four years, and they go on because they want to do something else. Sure. Like I, like I believe in that. I'm like, I don't think you can be one place forever anymore, um, outside of like you know the founder. But um, like I, I like the like how the old consulting companies did things, like Boston Consulting Group and McKinsey. Where like they almost had tours of duty. So like their alumni networks, like people would go to like BCG stay there for three, four years, like go out in the world, go do something else, mm. come back, mm. you know, in 10 years, do another tour of duty. 
It's like McKinsey's like that. I always thought that was so cool. Like they're, they actually build their business by having these massive alumni networks, much the way university does. Hmm. Right. So I kind of look at this place and I'm like, okay, if I want to do this for a long time um, and I'll do it as long as I'm enjoying it, somebody being here for two years, going away and doing something else, like, I don't know if they're ever going to come back. So I think it's something to be said. Like if somebody knows that they, cause more often than not, like we don't lose people to a competitor. Hmm. Right, the closest say, thing. City, I'm sure there's lots of competition here. There is, but the closest thing, like we've lost, like uh, one girl, uh, Katie, went to. Uh, she took an awesome, awesome opportunity at uh, Shopify. Like that's they're a partner. That's yeah. not even like. So that's the closest thing that we've had to someone leaving for a competitor. More often than not, like we had a guy lease recently because he wants to go make furniture. Wow, like, like front end software developers. Like, <laughs> yeah, I've been I've been sitting on, uh, you know. Uh, pallets of wood for like a year letting it dry out I'm gonna I'm gonna go do that for a while like, <laughs> fuck it, that's cool man I'm like I'm jealous that's awesome yeah. um, <laughs> have you it. always been like that open because that was actually one of the I guess another one of my hesitations of building a, a big team um, ever again on some level is um, like I feel like you invest so much into somebody and then oh, they, sucks. they leave like two years later and you're like Oh, oh that sucks. investment is gone. You know what I mean? Like, so financially, it's like the worst. Yeah. Yeah. If oh, you look I, at it just yeah. on that, it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. There's well, no and actually, you build, you build really great connections with people, especially the people you love and, and to see them go. I mean, we had someone go that, you know, was, was such an integral part of our business. And I mean, I'm really proud of him. Did really great. Moved mm-hmm. on to really good. You know, and I, I said at the end, I mean, this sucks, mm-hmm. um, but, I'm, but I'm really happy for it. And it really affected me. I mean, because they're, they're my friends, right? They... You know, you know the whole adage that I won't hire you if, if I don't want to go out with a beer. For, with people you. always like I, I do that with customers too. They're like, well, why would you know? Why would I want to work here for a, uh, a merchant, like uh, for a customer or uh, for any employee? I'm like, well, for me, it's simple. It's like if there's no alignment in values and you don't want to actually sit down and get a beer, mm-hmm. they, how are we ever going to get through anything that's difficult? Agreed. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, I, it's funny, man. You say that I've. Uh, there's somebody who's actually going to be leaving soon from this place who's like pretty integral part of the team. Um, but he's gone because he wants to do his own thing. Yeah. Like I, he's, you know, he's like, I, I just, I kind of want to do what you did. I'm like, okay. <laughs> yeah. What do you say to that? I, I <laughs> actually, I, okay. <laughs> I actually selfishly said that you, yeah, you can't leave. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, I, well, you, that's your, you, that's your, like your gut reaction when somebody leaves is like, no. <laughs> yeah, no, that's, that's what you want to say to them. And he has a bit more, like a bit more tenor than, than the average average in, individual. But you know, he said, I, "I don't know." Since I met you and this company, and, and and maybe this was a stepping stone. He said, "This is a dream job." Yeah, and and to show you the type of individual, I mean, he's he's also hiring his replacement. Like he said, he will not leave. Yeah, until wow. he finds the right replace. Like having that's awesome, man. Those people, yeah. On your t- can, do you wonder why I'm like in tears when people leave like that? Yeah, but it, you do. You get you get a cash. It's it's funny just on the on the notion of, of somebody wanting to do something like you did. I had a friend of mine. Well, two friends of mine. Oddly enough, they're they're both friends. So one guy, um, I don't want to name the company just in case. Well, yeah, no, I won't name the company just in case. But a uh, pretty big agency in the states, and um, uh, they were working together uh, for for years. Um, and one of his employees ended up leaving to start his own company. And then he ended up acquiring that company oh, God. like a year oh, and a half wow. later for a couple of million. Of course, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that had to sting. It's so like, he said, shit. I know, yeah. That so, was really expensive personally. Uh, <laughs> so he ended up acquiring them back like 18 months later and they've been working together again since. You gotta wonder, like Google does that all the time. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Like, there are people leave, sure. go start businesses that Google just turns around and acquires. I'm like, what was the point of your free time? <laughs> like, you, you, got, you give them time to go do something. I'm like, this is clearly not working. Yeah, yeah. How yeah, how long is the the longest? Because you're a family business, you guys have been around for a long, long time. Thirty two years. Yeah. Um, what's your I guess your longing uh, longest standing employee now? We actually have employee number one still with us. No, no shit. way. I was always yeah. wondering if you had like have a a yeah. ten year business or something like that. Imagine Come on, you still keep like not family. We just celebrated. Uh, wow, he was employee number one. That's why Italian no, family. No, no, no. <laughs> no, we just we just celebrated. Uh, she's. 30 years in the business. Wow. We had, we, my father hired her on after two years. Sure. Wow. And uh, loyalty. I mean, we, we have, I, I got to say, we have tons of loyalty. We have, we have people. It's not uncommon that someone will you've walk put, through our place. You've it's put such an effort years. into culture. That I was just surprised, say, yeah. man. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, yours like the gold standard for culture, right? Well, like I don't know about gold standard, but you know. I, 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 I told you. So we, we did a tour of, of Tony. <laughs> Tony's office uh, a couple months ago, and I've done tours of, of Airbnb, Apple, 
uh, God, just a, a slew of just amazing companies. And uh, yours is seriously one of my favorites by far. Um, you feel it. it. There's a difference, right? Like there's some, like there's some cool offices. And yeah. There's like you can tell they they do things right. But I found like your place, you actually just feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Like it's, I've been to Zappos and it feels fabric. Like when I went there, I don't know. I felt fabricated when I went there. Um, and probably they're, they're always on the tour circuit, right? So they're, oh God, yeah. how many times are you going to cheer in a day? You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> I have to cheer, yeah. cheer number nine for on a Tuesday. People You're like, yeah, you know what? Like, fuck it a little bit. Piss so, off, man. Um, do this on Fridays. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, totally. Yeah, no, I loved your tour, man. Because I know I mean, you you told me, when we first connected a couple of years ago, uh, you invited me to the office, and I, I never ended up making the time, unfortunately. I always said I was going to go, and then after that, we put the the tour with a handful of entrepreneurs um, to come visit. And I was just, dude, I'll do that tour as often as I can and bring mm-hmm. as many people as I can. Because the thing I love about yours, too, is that, you know, when I did, I went to Dropbox, they have this, like, I don't even know how many millions they invested in this cafeteria with this, like, this, like they have eight different cuisines all day, every day with a Michelin star chef that overlooks everything. And I'm like, that's cool, but that can't be replicated in 99.99% of the no. businesses. A lot of the stuff that you do can be re- replicated in the majority of businesses. And it's just like these fun uh, things like uh, still to this day, my biggest takeaway from from that tour, and I've it's something I've told so many people about, is the uh, the culture cards where you oh, have your oh, yeah, your core values. Totally ripped that off by the on, way. Oh, totally. Yeah. Can you can you explain? You to. Yeah. Yeah. So you know we we talk about culture, and I know you're a big culture guy as well, and and you know culture is important in the business, but you you gotta it's gotta permeate in the business. You gotta feel it. And mm-hmm. I truly believe you it's can top down too, right? It starts with you. Yeah. 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 To- totally. And uh, we thought, well, what's a way we can really uh, promote the culture peer to peer instead of it just being top down? And, and we just thought one of the ways is to celebrate. I, I love celebrating. Celebrate wins. We celebrate a lot. Um, but, but we don't celebrate someone living the core values. And uh, so we built each, each card. So we have 10 core values. So there's a card per core value. It's kind of the uh, the premise I kind of stole from when we were kids when mm-hmm. you gave out Valentine's. Uh, oh yeah, those little Valentine's. Yeah, yeah. To and from. Yeah, yeah. Same same concept. So if someone sees someone uh, emulating a value of the company, it's very simple. To you know, to Jason, um, and it's a little note, right? Hey, you really wowed the heck out of me by doing this for me. You may not mm-hmm. have noticed, but this is what you did, um, Tony. Or it could be anonymous. And you're starting to see them in the office pop up. And some are anonymous. Some are left on people's desk. And people light up. It's, see, to me, I don't think to people me, get that's, acknowledged. Right? Like, that's a great... Like, what, because cult, culture is a very weird thing like, to, to find, to talk about. Um, and especially in tech. Mm-hmm. Like, you, like, you go to a, a Dropbox, right? Um, or any, any Valley company. Or like, and uh, I even think Simon Sinek has been talking about this. Like, it's... Culture is not like free food and, no. and games and all that shit. It's not all that crap. Um, but I think it's, it's widely misunderstood, right? So like you see it as like an emotional thing, as a, as a community familial thing. Um, I see it as a personality. It, yeah, it's people, right? Mm-hmm. So I say, like, what's culture? I'm like, it's people. It's, it's how we interact. It's, it's like the qualities and the, and the standards we hold each, like, to each other. It's like it's all of those things. Um, but I think tech has kind of fucked it up a little bit. Where like it's made it far more superficial. Yeah. Um, especially like, yeah, like you made the comment, like we're in the city, right? It's like we compete for talent with all like Facebook. All these people are all around here. Um, and like now when people come in, it's, it's what their expectation is that like this is the stuff that you should have. Mm. And I'm like, but that's, that's not what makes a business good. That's not what makes it fun to work at a place. Mm. That's, that's surface level. Um, but – are we like are we broadly educating this like is this is this something that's understood you get it um few other people get it but i don't think it's a widely understood concept like what is culture how do you create it how do you foster it how do you grow it culture defines you right oh for sure and and i think people come to us cuz we we you know in the industry for sure people come to us we 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 want to challenge the status quo mm-hmm. that, that is we don't hold back on it. We're doing things very differently. Now, I think as entrepreneurs, our job is to polarize, right? Our job is to oh, not, yeah. not stay in the middle, right? No, and yeah. be kind of this comfort zone. No, we're either on this side or on this side. And, and and that's what you know we try to do at our company, really polarize. I forget who said it, but it's like if you're gonna if you're gonna stand for something, 
take a, a position that's like somebody can reasonably take the other position against? Yeah, I always talk about polarizing. Yeah, so like uh, like positioning, and um, if you want people to follow you, you you've got to stand for something. Like you and or you have to have an opinion on it, or, or like you do. Um, yeah, I like that. God, I wish I remember who it was. Somebody there was a podcast or something I was listening to, and they were talking about it was a conversation about positioning, and they were like, you can't. No, it was David Heimer Hansen on on Tim Ferriss. Mm-hmm. I think it was DHH. He was talking about like Fortune five hundred businesses, it was like. They, like, what do you, what's your statement? It's like, well, we stand for, you know, good customer service. Well, well you can't fucking stand for bad customer service. <laughs> you can't stand for that. That's exactly. a stupid statement. Yeah. Um, I think like that, you have that as your, at your business. I mean, you can't see this. I'm pointing at Tony. Sure. Um, I think that's whoa, part whoa, whoa. of culture too, right? But, is yeah, like, but, but I would, I would, I agree with, you know, Jason, I think what you've done as well with your business is polarized. I really, I really think you're trying to differentiate yourself. Oh, sure. And Mastermind Talks has a culture unto in itself. In a huge way. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you love to say, like, I don't have any employees. I'm like, well, yeah, but your, your community has its own culture. Yeah, no, I didn't, For sure. I didn't think totally. of it as such. Um, like, usually when I heard people talk about co- culture, my eyes would glaze, glaze over. I'm like, it doesn't apply to me. Right. Um, and yeah. then it was actually, I th- do you know James Wallace? Yeah, yeah. sure. Um, yeah, you would know James. So, yeah, so James put, probably put me to it two years ago. Where he's like, you you don't have staff, but you have a culture within Mastermind Talks. Which is why like, core values would work so well for you. Core values are huge. Well, one of the biggest things, uh, I, I mean, I, I know the importance of core values. I've heard it time and time again. But I was heard, listening to a guy named John Rat, uh, Ratliff, um, who had a company called Apple One. Um, they had about 650 employees. They were a call center. Um, but they had a really, really great culture. And um, because of the the strong culture, because call centers are a dime a dozen, but because of their their their, their strong uh, culture, they they got a crazy multiple compared mm-hmm. to everybody else um, for or for the industry standard. And one of the things he was talking about, and it just hit me at the right place at the right time. One of the things I always talk, uh, talk, talk about in the context of mastermind talks, my biggest struggle is um, kicking people out. Oh, yeah. um, and could you that. imagine how fun that would be? That would not be fun <laughs> no. at all. Like, and uh, his thing was like, you know, when you have strong core values, um, like you hire based on them, you oh, fire yeah. based on them, totally. um, and you coach up or you coach out. And uh, also, one thing actually you said at, at your um, tours, I, I when I was in in your conference room, I'm like, how? Because you're one of the sweetest guys I know. Um, I may, I asked you, like, how do you fire people? Because that's something I always had a really hard time with. And you being a super nice guy, I'm like, how do you do it? And you said, well, when you have, like, very strong core values in place, by the time you sit down with them, they already know for yeah. the most part, right? Yeah, um, Especially if you've got a system in place for actually, like, like grading yeah. and, like, measuring performance against yeah. core values. For but, sure. But it's amazing. It doesn't even have to be high tech. Ask themselves to rate them. Oh yeah, I, I just don't rate yourself one to ten on each core value. Yeah, what would you rate yourself? Does you, does your staff uh, rate your leadership team on core values? No, but we're in the midst of. We just did that. How did that work? Uh, well, so we just got the results individually, and uh-huh. I have I have my exec team's results. They don't have their own. Like, they, don't, <laughs> they don't have everybody else's. They yeah, just yeah, have yeah. their own. Um, but how was the whole exercise? Uh, so Miranda, who's our culture officer, she actually like she and she put out an anonymous survey. Okay. Right, so it's like rate each exec. Ah, grade them okay. on their core values, and then you leave like comments. Mm. Um, it's eye opening. Like one, <laughs> I got like five or six comments back on mine. Like I did, I think I did. I think even though it's anonymous, I think people are always like they're going to grade me higher just because I don't know why. Like it's just like the you drop thing. the hammer. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I was surprised. Like I got a low score on a couple of them, and I'm like, no shit. I'm like, I thought I was pretty good at that. Uh, <laughs> Humbling. Yeah. Oh, totally. And then some of the comments were like. It's heart wrenching, right? It's like <laughs> shit. It, you think, I did not think that anybody would ever think that of me, but it's like, oh well, yeah, okay, fuck. Guess I got to work on that. Because if one person thinks it's probably not, it's probably not isolated. Not when you, if you've done a good job of building a, a far more like community based organization where like everybody's quite tight. Like the thing that I'm most proud of here is that people are friends, right? Like we got a, we have a lot of. Uh, so, especially some of my first employees, they just moved to Toronto. When we hired them; like they, mm. they didn't live here before, so they're they're at each other's weddings now. They're nice. like they're like they're standing in each other. Like they're friends, barbecuing. Oh yeah, dude! It's um, hard not to be friends when you got beer on tap all yeah, day. Social every day. lubrication is, <laughs> is <laughs> plentiful. Yeah, um, but it's yeah, it's uh, it's interesting. Like 
to he- to hear your own, like to see people give you, like if you think that you're really, like I embody these core values and then have somebody come back and say like, yeah, you're a six. What the fuck? <laughs> so what are you going to do with that information besides make the change? Um, or make, I'm going to share it. So we're also like, we believe in transparency. So God, like, okay, we're yeah. actually going to share uh, our scores and our own feedback because we're going to start measuring everybody on core values um, as part of their, like their actual performance, mm. right? Because if you're doing these things well and you're embodying these core values, like we put a lot of effort into those. Um, so I thought it was a bit different, but we do something very similar. It, we do like a survey monkey. Mm. Um, we have a 10 point score program. Like how, how would you, is the leadership at Roma wowing you? Right. And so they do it at an individual. Like does, is Tony doing this? We don't have score that each yet. Those. So we did that. That's oh, scary, that's man. That's kind of cool. Yeah. So I got like, here's Matt's every core value. Here's Matt's score, <laughs> one to 10. How would you rate <laughs> on, Matt on this core on value? On each core value. Wow. And they could do it anonymously. Was it one to 10 or? Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So they had the option to do it anonymously or not, I'm assuming most. It was all anonymous. Oh, so yeah. everybody was universally yeah. anonymous. Okay. We have like another tool that we use in Slack called. Um, Office Vibe, which mm-hmm. regularly um, and randomly asks everybody questions on like different things, like you know what, what's the what's the one reason you would recommend this company to your friend, and then like they can write in a response, and it's they can choose whether or not they want to be anonymous. You can always tell like the more you know less, like less bashful people, yeah, because they'll like fucking stamp their profile on that thing. It's <laughs> like, yeah, it's like. Jeff, you know, Jeff here is older guy. He's like, I am not afraid to share my, <laughs> <laughs> it's like good or bad. It's like, here's what you're getting. Yeah. Um, and it's awesome. Every, every now and again, I kind of have an idea who would, who sends something in. So at our monthly all hands, we do a AMA, right? It's like, ask me anything. Mm-hmm. And they submit the questions beforehand. Um, and then I try and get through all of them. Um, and a lot of them are anonymous and every now and then like one, like really good one comes in and I'll, I'll call I'll call that per I won't call, I'll ask. I'm like, can somebody, if you're willing, just identify yourself? Because like, this is an awesome question. Yeah. Uh, and more often than not, they do. Because the default in this Q&A thing that we do is actually the default is anonymous. I think a lot of people just don't check off whether or not oh, okay. to show their name. Um, but we had one person ask the whole like male-female uh, ratio in a workplace thing. And like, what is, what is DMAC doing to get more women into tech? My short answer is like, I'm not fucking doing anything. I'm like, I can't affect the education system. Yeah. Um, but I went out, I had to, I actually like to answer that. I went out and got like all this research. I showed up. I'm like, cause it's such an important topic. And I, oh, so I kind of had an idea. Advanced? Yeah. Okay. And I kind of had an idea who asked it. I'm like, shit, this is such a good question. Um, and I'm like, a friend of mine runs a uh, ladies learning code. Hacker are you? Yeah. Uh, Heather Catherine. Heather. Oh, uh, Heather. Heather. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's like, and then I, you know, for me, it's, the topic was really interesting. I'm like, shit, my mom is the entrepreneur in my family. My dad is the, is like the salaryman and, and engineer. So like, and in my family, like all the women are entrepreneurs. Mm. So the, the whole like women in tech and all this stuff, I started doing research into it. I'm like, oh my God, I can't do anything. Mm. This starts in high school. Yeah. Right. And like the drop off rates and all this stuff. So I actually had to come prepared with all this stuff. And I call, I asked her, I'm like, I, I got a funny feeling who asked this question, but like, do you want to actually put your hand up? And she's just happily like, no problem. Yeah, it was me. And but it's kind of cool because then she's she's like more involved, or mm-hmm. she was more involved in that side of of things. Like she got she became a bit more of a, a spokesperson yeah. for it, like equality and workplace and all kinds of cool stuff. And she was a new hire. Like she had otherwise she probably would have never brought some of this stuff to the forefront or like voiced an opinion on it. Yeah. Um, but like just that simple thing of like allowing them to ask questions do it anonymously, you get access to, it's like a treasure trove of information. Sure. It's like the best thing that we have. Yeah. Stupid. It's his name is Leo. He's a bot on Slack. <laughs> Leo awesome. drives me nuts. He's like, do you haven't read your report this week? I'm like, all right. <laughs> 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 but yeah, it's a culture. It's a weird thing. It's like, you have to, it's, I can't define it. You get asked all the time. Like, what does culture mean? I'm like, I don't fucking know. It's, I don't know. I think for me, it's intuitive. Um, if you if you had to describe it, I would I would say it's the DNA or soul of the organization. It's it's how the company shows up. Mm-hmm. It's a feeling. That's the way I would describe it. Yeah, I'll give you an example. When you, you know, typically culture, we we, we refer to the term based in language, in countries. Right? Yeah, country and so yeah, for sure. Yeah. The United States has a certain culture, a way of life. Right. Right. Versus Canada. 
mm-hmm. versus Italy versus France. Yeah, like, and you learn like food and arts and all that is considered part of. Oh shit! Let's just knock the mic around. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Italian talking. <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, no, I think it has, it has to do with language. Yeah. It has to do with r- rituals. It has to do with all those fun things that you would find, and and that's the parallel I draw. So, like in your, then it's it's how you speak to each other. This yep. is why core values, like with what you're doing, it's it's really important because it it actually sets this like unspoken. It's like an unspoken set of rules mm-hmm. and, and how to conduct yourself and how to treat other people. Most of this shit's common sense, yeah. But it is nice to actually see it uh, and check back in with it, and then it'd be even cool like to have the community grade like you grade yourself on it. And that you grade everybody on it? Yeah. Well, we are planning Nothing to to work. integrate your cards. Um, it's cool. I'm asking oh, my yeah, talks, um, and I will give you 120 percent credit. I didn't oh, know. I didn't know you got. You sure. actually came up with that. I actually. I thought maybe you got it on a tour, or you stumbled across it in a book, or something like that. I think they're absolutely brilliant. So, uh, but you know, I, I guess on the topic of, of culture, because um, you guys didn't always have an incredible culture. You took over the business five years ago. Yeah. Um, Business has been around for 32 years. Your father's still involved in the business on, on some level. How hard, the one thing I got to oh, know is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how hard was that transition? So we talked about Matt and the transition. <sighs> Please, you know, Tony, tell us. The transitioning <laughs> out. Um, his wife, you on some level transitioning out your father. Mm-hmm. Um, I know some people who fight tooth and nail uh, through that process. Do your father, yeah, I guess how was that process overall? You know, I, there's a number of ways I can describe it. Um, <laughs> uh, you know, I want to keep it G-rated. It, it, was, it was very, very difficult. Yeah. Uh, extremely difficult. Yeah. And, and I, you know, I, I think, uh, you know, tough times caused. Um, yeah, because you didn't do it at like the best. I did the worst time. Yeah. So I did it at a time where it was 2008, 2009, if you recall. Mm. You know, global financial crisis. <laughs> do, you, do, you recall, do you remember that time? Do you remember that I'm, time? I'm, no. Not, not too many people buying $20,000 no. frames. <laughs> <laughs> people were, you know, people... People aren't buying frames. They, they weren't buying fridges. They, they were weren't buying, buying anything, food. man. <laughs> you know, I think food and probably fuel um, and, and getting the heat on their home, uh, right? The Get hell is Sean that? Paul Rock in the background. Welcome to Young Street. Good shit. <laughs> <laughs> so you're, you took over this business at like a horrible time. Yeah. Did you... So it was, it was a two-way street. I, I seen the writing on the wall and, and you know, I, I think my dad's one of the smartest guys in the world, you know minimal education no money you know that that typical immigrant story and, yeah. and no fucking business plan no no nothing you know i you know now we get bogged down with business plan tax strategy and all this fun stuff and i sometimes refer to him like he didn't do it and you know he, he was very successful <laughs> sure now, i'm not saying don't do it i'm saying do it but did you approach him with the idea of taking over or yeah. did he really yeah, yeah there was a there was a come to jesus moment i, I was traveling you know yeah. i was traveling a lot were you in the the business your entire life no so early on i was in the financial financial kind of industry yeah. i didn't know that uh, yeah so i i out of, out of school i i kind of wanted to sow my own oats and try to figure out my own thing and and so I went into financial and, and started to move fairly quickly in, in that and and then my dad had a come to Jesus moment with me and said, you know, hey, hey you know, I'm, I'm doing this and I'd like help. And, you know, I want, I'm doing this for you guys, right? Right. Typical Italian, yeah. I'm doing this for you guys. <laughs> yeah. Come yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, fork in the road and I went and I'm, I'm happy I did, you know, in retrospect. But, um, yeah, you know, my, my father built the business out of sweat, sweat equity and, and uh, hard work and tenacity. But that global financial crisis really, really hit us. And, and I think I think and it, that was that was the point where you're like, I need to take over. Yeah, be, well, it was I knew something had to change. Uh, I was traveling a lot. Mm. We were doing trade shows. I mean, I was in Las Vegas five times a year. I Ooh. was in High Point, North Carolina, for fifteen days a month. Uh, fifteen days, you know, out of the year, twice a year. I was just traveling ridiculous amount. We were the strategy was, you know, it was the work really hard, and if you're not working sure. hard, you know that that whole that, that whole spin wheel type of thing. Um, the adage was, if if you're not if work doesn't hurt, then you're not working hard enough. Right. And and <laughs> you're dude, not doing it, it right. It yeah. hurt, man. It, it was hurting. And and things start to give. Your health gives. Your, you know, I, I don't believe work has to hurt. So it's a kind of polar opposite. And at that moment, I just said, you know, Dad, uh, we're down a slippery slope, and I, I don't, you know, I, I don't want to lose this business. But if mm. we don't drastically change, or at least you know, really take a different approach, we're going to lose all our people. We're going to lose our business. And and that's when he, you know, he was he was listening. Um, and, and that's when I did my own soul searching and I went to Zappos that time. Mm. 
because uh, I was at a trade show and, and it was at, you know, 2010. Nobody was there. It was dead. And uh, one of the leasing guys said, come have a drink with me. And we went over over four people kind of like this. I uh, had a glass of wine and the lady in front of me, uh, a friend who now is a great friend, uh, handed a book to me and said, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure, you know, I never really gift a book after five minutes of meeting someone, but I think you'll really love this book. And it was Delivering Happiness by Tony Shea. And I never believed that work could be fun and work could be, you know, this yeah, whole. Yeah, it doesn't need to be fun all the time, but you can definitely. Enjoy it. Yeah, for yeah. sure. Uh, yeah. Or largely and broad, like more often than not yeah. enjoy it. The uh, I'm curious. And like, that's what kicked it off. With right? the transition of your, like for you taking over from your father, um, like, did you off from the onset, did you say like, okay, here, I'm going to do these things. You're going to do these things. Like, did you clearly define your roles? Dude, you're Italian. Do you think that, that, that's, oh, that's why I'm asking? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> not gonna work. Yeah. Dude. Well, you, okay. So like, here's the, the, the no. weird thing. I just told it, you know what we did? We, you know, I, I said, what do you love to do in the business? What, what, what is it that you love that, that you don't know whether well, you're That's a very wise playing. question to ask. And, and he loved the, the, the supplier relation. I mean, my dad still does it today. He's the best in the, in the, he in goes the over there. He does the whole, goes back yeah, and forth. I mean, we yeah, go together, yeah. but he goes. So much, he loved the part that put him back in Italy often. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. He still has the best office in place. Not we oh, totally. his office. We took a glimpse so in it. Cool. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a time warp. Like, this guy is, <laughs> this is a godfather in this corner right? of, the, of the building. So he, he, he took that over and, and, and it was a give and take, right? Yeah. A small piecemeal. I over communicated the shit out of everything the first six months. And then that went into a year and then, you know, slowly but surely then, you know, you, you gotta, I always believe you gotta, you gotta work at that trust, right? Sure. This is his baby. And I'm telling him, we got to change everything. I mean, you gotta be really, uh, really empathetic about his feeling. Imagine you, Matthew, uh, you, your son or da- your daughter comes to you. Hey dad, yeah, whatever you build here, yeah, we're going to change it all. Right. How, how's that yeah. going to go over? Yeah, right? yeah. I don't care how smart she you is. You know, but like, this is the, the weird, it's like the, of all the countries in the world that Italy has, I think Italy actually has the most generational businesses. Right, where like yeah, there's so possible. many companies Probably, yeah. that are on third and fourth and oh, fifth yeah. generation because they keep them. Like, oh. I don't know if it's like a hoarding thing, like, <laughs> they just they hang out of them, right? Like, everything from Illy Coffee to yeah, I don't know, Todd's, or or like there's so many brands mm-hmm. that are generation after generation after generation, and they do it, they somehow. They defy the odds of like the what is it, the first generation builds it, the second generation holds it steady, and the third generation destroys it. it. Yeah, yeah. The Italians somehow hold this shit steady. And I don't know, like, <laughs> uh, it's true. It, yeah. I, and I, I don't know if it's like a family unit thing. That's why I'm curious about the like the transition in the story because like, I feel like the at least in Italy the like everybody lives close together, right? Like my mm. cousins, if they live more than 20 minutes apart, they think it's a world away. Mm. you know like one so, of them moved to another town and they're like oh it's a 30 minute drive i never see my family anymore i'm like well, 30 minutes are you kidding <laughs> i can't walk down king street that fast like <laughs> like that's amazing so it's funny that that's that's how we live i mean we live probably 10 minutes from each other right worked probably another eight minutes from from where i'm at and the whole family like you probably have a lot of people like quite close to you right yeah that's quintessential yeah. Woodbridge it, too. It's interesting, yes. yes. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that. Up. So, yeah. <laughs> so when, when you took over the company, it's 2008, 2009, you're making that transition. Culture, uh, so you, you got the book in 2010? Yeah. And cool. then... That's quite the transformation. That was a, what, uh, was that like a light bulb moment? We have to do a whole 180 on culture? So the light bulb moment, so I read the book, I smashed it in three days. It's an easy book. Um, I believed nothing of the book. Oh, okay. Zero. I didn't believe shit. There's no way that like, could I have happen. to see it to believe it kind of thing. Well, then I went on, you know, I Googled it, right? And I'm like, they had these great little videos and shit. I believed nothing. And they had this one little, um, one little section for tours. I'm like, get the hell out of here. These guys give tours. And I put, and by the way, they were all sold out. So some really good marketing. But, uh, <laughs> but they said, if you want to reserve your, your name here, put your name, we'll call you if an opening comes up. And it's in Las Vegas. So for shits and giggles, I put my name. Two days later, Mr. Greary, we have an opening. Would you like to come? And once I commit, I'm all in, right? So jumped on a plane, went there, and the epiphany was right at the beginning, right when, right when I was greeted. You know, we talk about um, whether it's, it's the next mastermind talks or whether it's how you do business or whether anything we interact with, they made me feel mm-hmm. incredible. Like I never felt that way. And so I did the two, three day immersion and, you, you know, when you get the fob, you know, in and out entry. Yeah, and all yeah, that yeah. Pl- I, I didn't want to give that back. I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dad. Right? And, uh, and, and I just vowed, I, I want to make people feel that great every day. And if I could do that time and time again, um, 
how could you not, how could that not permeate into something really awesome when you're feeling that great every day? Yeah. That makes yeah, sense. I think that's like, that's probably the thing that, I don't know about you, but like for me, the, this is one of the few joys in actually having a bigger team is having like that much impact mm. on people's lives. Otherwise, like I don't, I don't know if a sane person would say like, you know what I want? I want like four or 500 employees. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Like that, no part of that sounds fun. No. Right. The, the relationship part is actually kind of cool. Um, when you think about it, like you have a, like a small town, but do, do you miss, so now you have a larger town than you did when you guys were at like 30, 40. Right. Do you, when it comes down, and you, you talked about this with, with um, your wife, that she enjoyed the company was much smaller, it was much tighter. Mm-hmm. Do you, if one of your biggest joys is again that, that kind of family feel, um, do, you, do you miss those days? Oh yeah, all the time. But I think like, is that, that's like, um, I guess that would be any kind of nostalgia I imagine, right? Like, there's just you. I mean, I miss parts of my childhood. I miss parts of. But you wouldn't like 20s. stop. Like, if you were to do this all over again, you wouldn't stop at thirty employees or stop at forty. There's days when I I think that way. <laughs> my, my dad says all the time. He would, you know, mm-hmm. there was at one point where you know you order two pizzas and everybody's having a great time. Yeah, yeah. Now it's you know I can't. Yeah, pizza order is like eight hundred dollars. I'm like, yeah. what? Ha- when did pizza cost eight hundred bucks? Like, <laughs> yeah. this is not right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was telling you guys what we spend on beer in a month. I'm like, what the fuck happened? There is, a, you know, I used to buy a case of beer. A I heard month. this like nugget of wisdom of around there being like a pizza rule in business. I forget what it was, but if you could like feed your team on like two pizzas, oh, I forget what it was. But, uh, but yeah, yeah, I was like, uh, that was the the thing that um, just going back the DHH when he taught. I love DHH like 37 Signals and like what they've done around work and culture. Like, they're amazing. Um, but I, I, well, I, I think he's, he was the one to comment on it. He's like, I don't know that you would, in your right mind, choose to, to have a huge team. Like if you could mm-hmm. do bigger and bigger revenues and grow a business and do great work and have a very small, tight-knit team, like, I think you would probably choose that. Mm-hmm. Most people. Kind of um, sounds like Instagram when it got sold. 55 yeah, employees yeah. and yeah. some billion like multiple. Some, yeah, right? So I, I, think like, uh, I think there are days where I look back and I'm like, all right, you know, I'd probably stop like 25. That was a that was a party. Like yeah. 25 people it was just a grand old time. You know, even Christmas parties. Like now I do our, our holiday party. I'm like, I'm throwing a fucking wedding every year. <laughs> you know, like totally. it's like tables of people and I gotta give a speech and like I gotta I got to prepare for it. I mean, we were 20 people. It was like, let's just go get drunk at a bar and have some fun, have a but good restaurant were, meal. Were those and, days, yeah. were you like burning the candle at both ends on some level? Cause you were, you were, yeah, you do you were in the business. Yeah. And, and it, yeah. So, but then there's times where I miss that too. That, that was, that was fun. Yeah. Um, Cause you don't even have barely the, the Wi-Fi password here when I asked for I it. I don't have the Wi-Fi <laughs> password here. <laughs> uh, you didn't have the Wi-Fi password and you got locked out of Google Docs or something like that. It's, uh, that's hilarious. yeah, I, yeah, it's, yeah, it's crazy how much they've taken away from me. Um, <laughs> Because I hack, I like to screw around stuff, <laughs> so they they took it all away. Because uh, everybody kept questioning, like, why, what, what, how did this this change in the site? I'm like, well, I just was in there last night. I decided to change it. Like, you can't do that. <laughs> like, well, we used to do that. Well, we don't work that way anymore. Like, God damn it. Um, no, I, I think like I don't know. I think there's that whole entrepreneurial roller coaster thing. Mm-hmm. So I, and it just might be me, but I bounce around a lot with, uh, like, I look back at what I what we had, and I look fondly on it. And I look at what we have and I look fondly on it. So I think it's, yeah. for me, it's totally normal to think, yo, that was nice. I could go back to that. And today yeah. is nice. I could go back, like I could keep doing this. So I kind of, I flop around a lot. And I don't know if that's like lack of focus or. No. Uh, how does that make you feel? I mean, when you started Mastermind Talks 1, or I don't even know if it was called 1. <laughs> um, it was just Mastermind Talks. It was just Mastermind Talks, yeah. And then, you know, to, to what it is today. Way, I mean, it's somewhat the same in the sense that like the size has never changed, and that was that was always a, a a thing for me that like when it came to quote unquote scaling, I knew I wanted to have a community where I knew everybody by name as much as possible, know the name of their spouses, the name of their mm. kids, like you know as much information as possible. I never wanted to walk in a room and be and not know people. Um, 
So because of that, our philosophy was instead of when the industry is all about scaling in size or scaling in, in uh, frequency of events, we want to scale by raising the caliber of people in attendance every year because I want to surround myself with better people all the time um, and also raise the, the price point. And that's been kind of our philosophy. So, I mean, there's a contrast between my last business and this business, but Mastermind Talks, like the, the experience has been getting richer every year because my relationships are getting deeper. Like I've known you now for a good two years mm-hmm. and- you know, the more I get to know you, the more I love you. I've known you for three, four years now. Yeah. The more I get to know you, the more I love you. So the more I go along this path, it's just a, it's a overall just a better experience. And uh, thankfully, with the whole like raising the quality of people in attendance, it sounds bad to like let people go. Um, but uh, I don't know. We're just moving in a direction where do you we'll still have, get to a point where it's, I think I heard you say this a, a year or two ago. Do you still have the opinion of like every year you just start over from scratch and you're like, I don't know what I'm like, I don't have a three year plan, a five year plan. And you made a comment like that. I, I don't even, it still it was is. Two years yeah. ago, it was like, I just look at it. Like I have a one year business. And next well, year yeah, the, the reason for that is because my last business, um, felt like I was stuck on this hamster wheel where I built a business. I hated to enable me to buy things I didn't <laughs> need to impress people. I didn't like, and because I had like 20, staff um uh, again it's a very small number compared to what you guys have but i can't i couldn't get out mm. and my business was a very it was a it was never poised for acquisition and that would have taken a long time to position it for acquisition and all that kind of stuff so i didn't want to do it so i always felt like I was, I was a prisoner to my business um and then when mastermind talks came along one of the appealing aspects of it was that it was project-based it was originally supposed to be one event it's, hey, like you look at like this is our project exactly yeah so it's like i have this nine months from now in this case 143 days from now i have mastermind talks and i don't have a mastermind talks 2018 plan now i've done four there's most likely going to be a sixth sure. event but at any time if if i feel like that's the best we can do or i feel like my heart's not in it anymore or any of that kind of stuff. I know if my heart's not in it, I mean, I, I you just don't have to do it anymore. I, I won't do yeah. it. Like from an integrity perspective, like the people that we serve are my closest friends. So I will never give them like half ass or anything like that. So that's the beautiful thing. It is very kind of project based, which is nice because I know like if, if I wanted to, if this mastermind talks passed, I could sell widgets on Amazon or I could come up with another oh, business yeah. and, pretty easily so there's no shortage of opportunity right yeah so i it's nice not feeling kind of trapped and and every time once the of your project is done reassessing like you know where am i at does this still light me up do i still feel challenged um and that kind of stuff do you i mean i don't know tony this would actually be an interesting one for you because you actually have a family business that you've taken over i find the like the question of for how long do i do this and how big do i get like those for me, those are like the hardest questions mm-hmm. to answer and because the, the answer is always changing um, up and down. Uh, but how – I feel like that needs to be like like dug into a Mastermind Talks. Like, Jason, this is what you need to do for content. Because like the – I have this conversation with so many entrepreneurs where yeah. they're – they just – they don't know, right? Well, like I got into it. It's working. Now how far do I take it? Yeah. Well, I mean I think the you know, traditional – business gospels so there's scale and people don't question why they're scaling and actually that was one of my realizations it's insane when I, I had my 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 ticketing business and this is something i learned somewhat the hard way and um this is what helped me kind of you know put a little more forethought into building mastermind talks where i um i feel like every business has different kind of sweet spots mm-hmm. um and it's most people unconsciously go through those spe- sweet spots and they, they don't think twice about it but for me my 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 last business i think we were doing maybe I don't know, $2 million a year in revenue. I was probably banking like half a million uh, with like four employees or something like that. So it was just making a ton of cash. And then I was just incredibly naive as an entrepreneur at the time. And I'm like, well, if I double my revenue, I'll double my profits. It'll be even better. So within like a year or a year and a half, we ended up hitting like 4 million and I ended up like netting maybe like 550,000, but I had like three times the headache. And I'm like, this is, this is not this worth is it. Cause you have yeah. to break through to that next kind of like, well, yeah, cause sweet spot. Is a step up. It's yeah. never, uh, See, that's, that's kind of where thing. I feel we're at. You know, you asked the question, you're in a sweet spot. Uh, well, we're going, you know, I described 2017. We're, we're going on a major offensive. Mm. Um, we're in a growth stage. Um, and, and you know what, to answer your question, I, I think it's when you're having fun. Um, and are you being challenged? Yeah. And, and I'll tell you, I'm, I'm having fun and I'm being challenged. Now, challenge, there, there's been tons of challenges, both culturally, because uh, we've, 
you know, change the game a bit and the whole business model, businesses in general are changing. I mean, why, why would a molding company have developers? Yeah, I guess. That, right? Yeah, yeah. Right? I mean, I have, I have like, developers. These are my software developers. Right? What? I, I software <laughs> my, my IT is, you know, we have six people in IT. When I got there, we had one. Um, and, and the business is, is really transitioning. And, and to be quite frank with you, I'm, I'm enjoying it. It's a lot of lot But do you set like the, I want to be number one in our field or I want to be the biggest? Like, does, does that, or is it just a, look, we're going to keep going while it's fun and enjoyable and challenging and wherever that takes us, it takes us. Is that sort of the... Yeah, we never want to be the biggest. I mean, our major competitor is Warren Buffett, so I'm not sure we're going to... Probably you know, not going to outspend him. Probably not. <laughs> um, but, but we do want to be the best at what we do when it comes to quality design and service. And, mm-hmm. and, and we're not only saying we want to, we're putting money and dollars to that. And I don't know, it always goes back, every conversation I have, it always goes back to how we're making the customer feel. Yeah, and, same. And, um, you, you know, I, I have to go back to you, Jason, you know, how, how you made me feel at Mastermind Talks because I came second year um, was pretty freaking awesome. And I didn't really know a soul in the room. Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't know you. And then the third one, it was like, wow, because that, that changed the game. That was in Napa. Uh, Napa and yeah. then we went to oh, Ojai. Awesome. And like Ojai was like, Psh. And and how you make me feel is all I remember. I, I can't even tell you all the, the speakers we had. I, I mean, I can name a few, but, yeah. but I can tell you how I felt for those you know, three, four days. Yeah, there's a, there's a saying from Danny Meyer that uh, business like life is all about how you make people feel. It's that simple and it's that hard. And that goes with your staff, obviously, mm-hmm. and that goes with your customers. And, um, and I hate referring like the word customer, but um, it's... There's just not another term. There's no great term. We call, we call them, yeah. we call them guests at Mastermind Talks, but to illustrate the point... But, uh, I mean, that's our, our biggest focus. And, and getting back to what you said about being challenged, um, I think by doing a lot of like looking over like feedback, whether it be from internally with staff or from your, your, your customers, um, there's so many ways to improve. Like there's, there's so yeah, much you can do on the experience yeah, side. Yeah, it's of endless. That's why I, I think it's more of a, I do agree on the whole, like there is a sweet spot for every business. Um, we've blown through two. Mm. Um, now I'm looking. So you did kind of these, yeah, totally. Steps. Um, just entering a th- our third now, and I'm not. I'm actually like the question I have is like, do I even want to go past this point, mm-hmm. or do you just like do you grow do you in other ways? That? How do you stop that growth? Uh, I think you just do. It's the same reason that it's the yeah. same way that you actually pursue growth. You just go and do it. Um, and I think that there's type there's types of growth. Like you could you could stop a top line number sure. or or yeah. like moderately improve it. Like slow down that, and then focus on bottom line, or you could you could grow in other ways, like mm-hmm. um, you know, new lines of business, or invest in other things entirely. So, I don't think it's ever a question of like, are you the entrepreneur going to stop growing and trying things out? And because I think there's always that itch and that bug. Like I don't think that goes away. No, I, I do. hope it doesn't. Like it's the coolest thing ever. Um, yeah. But there is this thing of like growth for the sake of growth seems kind of odd. Like the. I'm going to pursue growth at the cost of everything. Like yeah. that to me is just freaking weird. There's, a, I remember there, there's once I heard a this somebody say that this billionaire in India or something like that had this like philosophy that things break at, at threes and tens. Did you ever hear that before? <laughs> no. So no. when you have three employees, you need to revamp the the business communication, that kind of stuff. When you hit ten, you need to revamp. When you hit thirty revamp 100 revamp 300 and he has some like 10,000 employees and that's the trend that he thought so those wow that, that he's seen so his like his rule of thumb was like threes and tens everything changes wow. at threes and tens um so that's been a pretty like interesting kind of rule of thumb yeah there's definitely as we're approaching 100 uh, you see it yeah. yeah you totally see it shit i bet you if we look back now like 30 people was 30 people and the revenue correlated to 30 people was Pro, it was one of our sweet spots for sure. Mm. That's how I feel where we're at. I, I think it's there's that tipping point. It, it feels that way. Yeah, and, and this gets back to like business doesn't have to be tough. No, you know what I mean. Like, no, it's tough. Like Mastermind Talks is tough in the sense like I make it tough on me to always raise the bar and all that kind of stuff. But the business itself is not is not tough per se. Um, and it's in, because of that, it's enjoyable. Like it's incredibly enjoyable. And I, so I really kind of resonate with that and getting back to you, like scaling for the sake of scaling, unfortunately too many entrepreneurs and you see it like, uh, and then you'll, you'll see, you know, an entrepreneur in his forties with 400 employees and they're like, 
my life still like why or now, now what type thing and they just they're on that hamster wheel and they you know they they reach their goals and i'm i'm sure we all have done it where you put the that goal off in the horizon you achieve and you're like Oh, I still don't, still don't have that fulfillment. I'm gonna. I, it wasn't big enough of a goal, so you make another, another big one. goal. Yeah. So, so I, I think the then the interest, like the where I, I guess where I struggle um, is is how do you think longer term, and how do you like plan longer term, like family and all those like life things. If if it's all sort of just like I'm just gonna kind of do whatever is enjoyable and challenging and go about it. Um, like how do you like, do you do you have like a ten year like this is what I see no, I'm myself not that doing smart. no no so probably I don't think it actually has to do with being smart <laughs> no, I think it's just like a no you know, can used, you look that we far we use out? Cameron's uh, painted uh, the painted, painted picture yeah, yeah. That, that was pretty do you cool. do like the big hairy audacious goal like yeah the, the decade we, yeah okay. we do beehives yeah. and we do a lot of fun stuff but I don't know I have this adage that life is always working um and and you're always being guided I know it kind that's of such sounds, an old world way to like I, I love it I think it's that's just I, I feel like my Nona would say that, but know? I do, and, and <laughs> I, I mean that's the way I live my life. I just I think life is always working, even when it's not. And and sometimes your biggest challenges are your biggest gifts, because uh, in, in order to know what you want, you need to taste what you don't want. And so I think life kind of gives you all this, and then you get to decide. Yeah, it's knocking I, you around down a path. The no one thing uh, Philip McKernan has a great saying that I love, um, which makes always makes me laugh when I hear people have these five, ten year plans. Is that too often we're chasing the opportunities that we miss out on the possibilities? Mm. And oh, that's brilliant. For me, that's Fucking been one. Philip. <laughs> <laughs> for me, I mean, he's been influential in my life as God, far as like just... you know the things I try to cultivate most right now in my life are like space and simplicity. Like if I can get more of that and just be be able to be in a position where I could take advantage of opportunities as they come. Because when I started mastermind talks, there's no I never thought we'd get where we are. Again, it was planned to do the the one event and right. that's really it. And then find some kind of business to start making money. And that's only been three years. Mastermind talks started in twenty thirteen. Um yeah, it hasn't um, been that long. That's no, no. five years. This is event twenty thirteen. Oh okay yeah. Three years. Wow. Our first event was May twenty thirteen. So wow. is this number four coming up? And this won't be number five. Wow. This is number five. So what happened was because I started in debt, oh. I did them actually nobody know not too many people. I made it mention from it from the stage, but I did the event every nine months uh. so I could build up cash. Um, even though we positioned it as an annual event, it took place every year. But the first one was May. The next one was like March. You know That's what I mean? Yeah, gotcha. Exactly. Oh, okay. Uh, All right. Flow. So, but now it's it's like once a year. The well, last one yeah. was April. The next one's May. Uh, um, thirteen months. Yeah. So thirteen. Now I'm getting a little, yeah, a little lazy. Cash flow sucks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Make a little bit too much money. Um, <laughs> but uh, now I think it's an interesting conversation. Again, a lot, a lot of entrepreneurs. I mean, I like have. Philip kind of. I feel like Philip does explore some of that with like more of the why. But why do you do things this way? And like, yeah. why, are, like, why are you doing what you do? Um, it's funny people always ask like I always I recommend Philip to like so many people mm. like you just need to read his shit watch his shit just listen to him and they're like what does he do I'm like you ever hear the horse whisperer they're like yeah I'm like he's like that but for humans <laughs> entrepreneurs <laughs> yeah. uh, I think it's yeah, I don't know I think that those are the hardest questions to answer it's like you know what do you value in your life how do you get more of it or or the ideal amount of it like space and simplicity I feel like those are hard things to chase yeah um like simple is really difficult right now. Oh yeah, we talked about this a little bit over dinner. I don't understand how you've gotten to this point in the most respectful way possible. In the sense that, like you, like you may mention that uh, you know your your like your your big ideas and, and all that kind of stuff. You're not structured at all. At any of that kind of stuff. like to get to see where you are now. Like I, I'm very much like like you, and I could never see myself in your position where I have this full team under me, an exec team, you know, 80, 90 employees under that. I, I don't know how'd you get there. Oh, the last year and a half has been so painful. Okay, yeah, okay. it's not like it's not fun. Um, yeah, no, because you seem comfortable. It's because when I, I I invite you out to I things, just like you always say yes. A whole lot. You always have like time <laughs> for things. You come to the office like twice a week, like. And I'm like, man, this guy's like really dialed in. I just in. don't like commuting. Yeah, I, I, I work. We, we do a lot over, because uh, we have remote, we have people all over the place too. Yeah. So it's like, I think there's a little over, about 75 people here. We're 90 in total. So we have some people, in, I have people in Pakistan, we have people in Montreal, New York, uh, other parts of Canada that I can't, like Vancouver. Like they're all, so we've gotten, we've built a little bit of muscle now around like remote teams um, and continuing to. Like I actually think the future of work is very virtual and remote. So like we're a, a physical space, we're in our space right now, and we'll always have this, I think. Um, 
but I, yeah, I guess I, I, I embraced it. I'm like, if I want to have a company that is flexible in schedule and geography and uh, how you work, lead by example, man. What was there a breaking point where you're like, you got burnt out and you're like, I need, uh, no. So this is like, I, this is no, um, great mentors, man. Mm. Like I had a few that just, they, like they saw it coming. They're like, look, you're, you're growing. You need to do this. Like, this isn't an option thing. You're not superhuman. Like you're, you can't scale a business in people to past where you are now without having like actual leadership and building that team and building. So like we went up, we hired an exec coach. We hired, um, we bought the, bought that one company. Um, yeah, just like HR, built the team out. Said. Yeah. Put it, like, inst- had a, went out. We actually took like four months to find this, uh, Miranda, who's our culture officer. She's freaking amazing. Um, you're, and just out of curiosity real quickly, your mentors, same industry or different industry? No, all over the place. Um, some in the same industry, like uh, a really good friend of ours, uh, his name's Bernie Lee. He actually had a company called Pure Energies, which is like a solar, uh, residential solar business in Canada. They sold about a year ago. Mm-hmm. He's always been our, like this, this like sounding board for, because he was in, he was worked for um, Inovia for a while. Yeah, so yeah. He's, an, he's a venture capitalist for like 10 years. He was a VC before he started his own and then sold it. Um, so he's always been like the finance guy that we can kind of go to and be like, okay, this is what we're thinking of doing. Like, does this actually, is this model going to work? Mm-hmm. Like we're, we're quite good on the modeling side. Like how do we grow this business? Like, is it like really calculated mostly because my brother's a genius there. Um, but then I've got Bernie to kind of bounce those things off of. Um, I've got Ben Burmaster who, uh, is in the industry, but more from that like operational distribution, moving shit around. Like he's a really good operator. Mm-hmm. So if I have, like if I've ever had things there, I go to him it's been a whole bunch of people over the years. Like I'll even go to my, like my family, um, friends, like anybody that I can get my hands on that will give me their time that has done some of this stuff. Mm-hmm. I, I like, I, I ask, I'm not afraid to ask, um, all kinds of industries. Like my uncle was in cleaning, like, like, uh, industrial cleaning, best friends, parents, same thing, commercial cleaning and construction. Like, it's not, like not even close to related, but there's always so something. You were, you were, well, so what helped greatly was having the right mentors or the right influencers on some level. Especially from that, yeah. To like guide you. You're growing a team. This is what you're going to hit. Mm. Um, so I avoided the extreme burnout that a few of them had hit. Mm. Um, and I'm like eternally thankful for that because that size of the business that we were getting to was right around the time that Jen got pregnant. Mm. I'm like, oh shit! Like, I can't, I can't burn out, and I can't, I can't work more yeah. going into this part of my life. Yeah. Like, this is gonna be, you know, horrible father of the year award. Uh, <laughs> so, I didn't want that, and uh, yeah, I, I just avoided it. I feel like I dodged a big bullet. Now, the last year and a half of like building an exec team, like, there's so much pain that comes with new people in leadership. Um, I don't know if you've gone through that, but like the, yeah, like new faces, you know, like, like the first 10 people that I hired are here and now they actually have new people that are, are actually managing their teams, not me. Mm-hmm. So that's weird, mm-hmm. right? Customers that were my customers. I, I sold them. I brought them in this place. No longer talk to them. Like we had 45 customers when we started building out that exec team. I maybe talked to five, like my five closest and best friends that like, you know, we became friends and not customers. Um, that's it. So like that transition sucks. No part of that was good. But do you take deep dives in some of them? Some. Okay. Yeah. Uh, not all. Okay. Can't. Yeah. I know. How can you? Yeah. Yeah. You just, you just can't. Um, well, especially when you're scaling this much, right? You have, yeah. You, you need those people. Yeah, you do. And you, yeah, like there's, that's the thing. Like there's, I, I, I don't, I love what I have. Um, I'm grateful for what I have and the people, like more of the people. But like when I look at the, like the shit that I don't have now, it's like, I don't talk to most of our customers anymore. Mm. I can't, I don't talk to most of my people like intimately. I don't like sit down and have a beer with them. I don't do that anymore. Can't. They just like there's a problem with time. There's just not enough of sure. it in a 
you know? So like that, I think that's the stuff that I like, I look at and I'm like, you know, if I ever question why it's usually brought on by some of that stuff. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we will, we will end on that. Uh, thank you guys. Really appreciate it. And maybe we'll do a part two one of these days. Sounds good. We'll Thanks. Your uh, office next time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having us. We guys. should yeah, do man, it. This was fun. We'll, we'll do it at Tony's office. All right. That's see awesome. you guys. Later. Bye. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It is done. Nothing would make me happier, and I've said this before, than to hear your thoughts and your biggest takeaways. Feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Jason Gaynard, J-A-Y-S-O-N-G-A-I-G-N-A-R-D, or email me at Jason at CommunityMade.com. For show notes and any resources mentioned in this episode, visit the Community Made group. If you're not a member, it's free. Just go to communitymade.com to get access. If you enjoyed this podcast, I would be forever grateful if you got the word out by sharing it with a friend, rating it on iTunes, or leaving a review. Next season, we'll be doing a showcase, uh, I guess a reviewer showcase on at the end of every episode. So to be considered, simply leave an honest review on iTunes. I appreciate your love and support. You know this. And I look forward to having you on our next episode where I share a killer Q&A with billionaire Naveen Jain. Making money is not the end goal. Making money is a byproduct of doing things that you really enjoy doing, right? So if you focus on it, you never get it. So like making money is like having an orgasm. If you focus on it, you're never going to get it. (laughs) Ladies and gentlemen, I will see you on episode seven.